Hello YouTube, this is DIY Electronics and today we're going to talk about inductors. Um, inductors come in all different shapes and sizes. Um, this is a choke, an RF choke. Um, you know, they can be really tiny. Um, be a little bigger. Um, some of them have air cores, for instance, that one. Some of them have iron cores. Some of them have um, ferrite cores. Some of them come in different kinds of uh, plastic and um, iron cores. Um, there's a bunch of different ways that um, inductors are constructed. Um, an inductor simply is a piece of a conducting material wrapped around or wrapped into um, a neat little coil. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be wrapped around the thing. For instance, the air inductor is just a coil of wire wrapped up. Um, the wire that you have to use, though, is a special enamel coated wire that um, has a little film around it that uh, keeps it from touching other coils and bypassing the loops. Um, you know, they're used in just about every electronic device you can think of. Um, they're trying to phase them out now with little chips to uh, do the same thing an inductor does, but it's hard to replace, you know, these things have been around for a while. And they're big, they're bulky, um, so building a small electronic device that requires one of these is sometimes hard, which is why they're trying to come up with different ways to do it. Um, you know, they're used in your power transformers um, to, you know, to power your home, to uh, power your computer, to power just about any device that requires DC electricity. They're used in your car radio for tuning. Um, there's a lot of uses for inductors, and, uh, and that's a good reason that I want to bring it up and uh, explain some of the theory and how to um, actually use them in a circuit. Um, this is going to be a multi-part video segment, I guess is what you'd call it. Um, and the first part I'm going to start off with is the simplest part, and that's a, a DC circuit, a DC RL circuit. Um, what we got here is a resistor. Well, we got a battery, a resistor, and an inductor. Um, and a DC circuit, um, what's going to happen is well, hang on. All right, an inductor. Let's go into a little more theory on them. Um, an inductor opposes change in current. Um, so once a then the circuit reaches its steady state, which is its um, everything's the full current is flowing through the circuit. It should be. I'll explain that in a minute. But once it reaches its steady state. Um, the inductor resist, or it well, I guess it resists the change in current. So if there was to be, let's say we had one amp across the inductor and it was at its steady state, which is going to be its peak amperage. Um, anyways, so we got one amp through the circuit, and if there was a really high spike of let's say like five amps over here and this was at 1 amps, this would slowly rise up to the 5 amps, amps. Whereas if we just had a simple battery and a resistor and we hit 5 amps over here, this would automatic, the whole circuit would instantaneously be at 5 amps. Um, so that's why inductors are useful. Um, and they have a lot of other characteristics too that make them useful too but that's one of the main reasons um, in computer power supplies and uh, surge protection and uh, a bunch of other little you know neat little facts um all right back to the circuit so inductors resist the change in current um, just like capacitors resist the change in voltage so what that means is an inductor starts off with zero current so it doesn't want to change so when we connect our battery into the circuit, 
we're going to start off with just a little bit of current flowing through here. And this inductor is going to act as an open. So we're going to have a break in our circuit, or right there. So it's going to act as an open in the circuit. So nothing's going to flow when that battery is first connected. And as current starts to build in these windings, you know, a little bit more is going to start going through. And the flux around this or um, magnetic field is going to start to build. And as it builds, it's going to resist the change in current even more. Just like capacitors, as they start to charge up their um, capacitance, they uh, s start slowly gaining the voltage. So these are going to start slowly getting the amperage, but eventually it's going to reach its steady state, which is, and once it reaches its steady state, the inductor is going to cease to affect the circuit. So unless there was a amperage spike, but you could treat it as a wire. So you could just say the inductors and a wire and a DC circuit. So then the amperage flowing through the circuit or the peak amperage is simply going to be this little formula down here, which I know you can't see that P there, which is um, the peak amperage equals the voltage peak divided by the resistance of the circuit. Now the inductor you can treat it as an ideal inductor which means it has no resistance um, dissipates no heat um, uh, affects the circuit none at all loses no energy but as with any electronic component nothing is ideal um, the laws of physics do affect them so the inductor is going to have a resistance um, and then what this resistance is called, just with inductor out of the circuit, no power to it, is it's called um, the winding resistance, or RW, which is how it's referred to. And that's the resistance from the winding of the wire. And wire has a resistance naturally. Um, each type of wire has a different resistor, copper being one of the lowest that's cheapest to use. Um, you can use platinum or gold, there's other better conductors than copper, but copper is one of the, the few that's cheap and readily available and has very low resistance. So when you start wrapping all these turns of wire around this core, you start to get a lot of wire in this spot so it, it creates a resistance so you actually have a little bit of a resistance on it when you wind it together and we'll go ahead and just test this 0.3 ohms 0.2 ohms of, uh, resistance winding in the inductor so anyways so this flux will eventually hit its maximum potential um, and it'll hit it, the DC steady state of the circuit. And at that point, to get the the peak amperage, it's just this. It's Ohm's law um, with your voltage source or voltage peak divided by the resistance of the circuit. You can add in the inductor's resistance if you want. You don't have to, um, but you can. All right. So in this circuit right here, when the battery is connected, the amperage, zoom in, sorry. So the amperage down here is going to be at zero. And the voltage, or VL, which is the voltage drop across the inductor, right here, it, it's going to be at the supply voltage. So if we had a 5 volt supply, this is going to be at 5 volts when the battery is connected and the amperage is going to be at zero. And as time goes on, the voltage is going to go down and the amperage is going to go up in an in a exponential um, fashion, I guess. Um, this right here, 
What am I going with here? So amperage goes up, and then once it hits its maximum potential, the amperage, it's going to steady out and stay at a, a certain point. Um, and just as the just as the inductor was charged, it's also going to drain the same way. Um, because an inductor still has that magnetic field around it. So if you were to take the inductor out of the circuit when it's at its amp or uh, peak amperage and connect the resistor across it, it would actually flow current through the um, resistor for a little while after it was taken out of the circuit, just like capacitors um, will store voltage even after they've been removed from the circuit. Um, but when you connect that resistor across, it'll lose its amperage the same way it gained it um, in an exponential um, uh, fashion because um, it resists the change in current. Um, and that's just about it for a DC RL circuit. Um, the next video that we'll cover will be on an AC or um, alternating current with a frequency through the circuit and how to find the resistance and uh, what it does to the circuit. Thanks for watching.